Welcome back. It's California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are now joined by Kimberly Drake. She is a professor at Scripps College in writing, but she has taken her love and expertise in writing to a level one would never anticipate. And it's actually quite inspiring to hear what you have done over the last few years. Talk to us about a program known as Crossroads before you tell us the punchline. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Crossroads. So Crossroads is a transitional facility for women who are on parole from one of the California prisons. There's a program that can last for three to six months. Mm. They will be getting group counseling. They will be doing um, individual counseling. They will have job training. Sure. They have a lot of volunteers like myself that go in and help them with various things. Um, they have a garden. They have volunteers come and help them with that. So, so it's a halfway house yes. to use the vernacular yes. if I may say. Mm -hmm. And we, these women tend to have been in prison for what reason? Um, typically it's uh, drugs or right. it is um, violence toward a significant other who was abusive. Mm. And there's so there's no doubt there's a lot of raw emotion mm -hmm. within these women. Mm -hmm. They are on the other side of their sentence. So there's probably a lot of joy, excitement, mm -hmm. fear, anxiety, mm -hmm. and you've decided to channel that with them and for them in an incredibly unique way. Tell us about it. So um, I was asked by one of the advisory board members of Crossroads to lead a writing workshop on uh, women cooking with stingers in prison. And a stinger yes. is a uh, immersion heater. It is used to boil water. So women in prisons have been cooking using these in their cells for decades. Explain um, exactly what a stinger okay. looks like. Because so, in a lot of ways it's a metaphor right. to me. Yes, yeah. it's, uh, typically it's two spoons. Uh, there's an extension cord. Uh, one cuts the cord off, strips the wires, attaches them to the spoons, puts a wooden object in between them so that it won't blow up, uh, tapes this, sometimes puts a, a big pen cap with a little hanging thing down so that Got you can it. hang it on the edge of a bucket. Got it. And then you just put it in water and plug it in and it will boil the water eventually. It doesn't cause electrocution or whatever it may be. I'm sure that's happening. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yes. Um, and so these women will then get various food items from? Catalogs that they can order. They have a canteen where they can go buy things on the spot. And then sometimes they will smuggle things out of the dining hall, which there's some stories in there about that. And that's what ultimately was the result of your work with mm -hmm. these women. This book called Stinging for Their Suppers, How Women in Prisons Nourish Their Bodies and Souls. Yes, there's a picture of a stinger there. There is, <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I was very compelled by it. And I would love for you to give me a sense of what they learned through this process, some of the stories from this book, and what you think it helped, how it nourished their souls. Well, I think the main message that you get from reading this book is that they are human beings like anyone else. They're um, diverse people. They have many different experiences, very different backgrounds, but they come together in this really difficult space of prison and they nourish each other and they nourish themselves. And one way to do that is by cooking and not going to the dining commons where you have to wait in a long line and you don't get enough time to eat and you don't really get enough food or the quality of food that you might be used to. So they just go into their cells and cook for each other. And sometimes they'll have big parties. Um, holidays are big. They have Super Bowl parties. They have Thanksgiving. They have Christmas. And, and this is the prison kind of turning a blind eye to this behavior? I think to some extent, yes. It because is. one could argue that there could be a risk of engaging in this type of activity yes. in terms of the electricity yes. and all. Well, they, they finally allowed them to have you know, commercially made stingers um, that they can order from uh, catalogs. And you can get them yourself oh, really? for okay. $7. Okay. Um, and that they can buy food in the catalogs or the ingredients of food so that they could make coffee or something. That's perfectly fine for them to make right. a little, like a coffee or tea using a stinger, and it's just when it gets a little bit more elaborate that problems can happen. So this book includes recipes, mm -hmm. but there are stories behind the recipes. Mm -hmm. If you can, I know these are all your children, metaphorically <laughs> speaking, but give us a couple of stories that really jumped out at you. 
Um, well, I think one of them uh, that I've often read to other people right. is by Jackie White. She's actually uh, working at Crossroads now and oh, has wow. been for many years. Oh. But, and but a client at one point. Yes, yes. She, she, her story begins on my seventh trip to prison. I finally decided that I was going to stay out of the mix. I was going to stop getting into trouble. I was going to stop participating in the drama. And part of how she did so was by cooking potato soup, which was made out of potato chips. And she said, you know, mm -hmm. they have lockers. So she said, you'd look in your locker at the end of the month and you'd see these, like a crushed up bag of potatoes chips. And what could you do with those? Well, you could take creamer that you save from your coffee and mix it with some other random things and you can make potato soup. And then she talks about how it saved her so many times from getting into the kind of trouble that would keep her there longer. What do you think the process of participating in this project, how did it benefit these women? The fact that their work is now published, mm -hmm. but also <laughs> that they put pen to paper. Um, it's interesting, when they first show up in the workshop, um, sometimes they s don't seem as interested. And I've, you know, often I've said, oh, do you want, you know, can we edit your story? Can mm -hmm. we edit it after you leave here? And they'd say, whatever. They, they're not trying to be professional writers, but after they work together and they produce a story and then the whole group does a workshop of that story, I've seen them become very excited and feel really proud of what they produced. And that's really gratifying to see people say, I'm a writer at mm. the end of, you know, a few months of working mm. on writing. Um, and they are, they're, they're amazing storytellers and all it takes is really for them to put the stories on paper. Are they scared? to write? Writing I think some of, them are. some of them are. Yeah. I mean, one of them told me, I have a learning disability, I can't write, and she's writing. Right. And she's very happy and proud that she's writing. So this book was released a couple of years ago, is that right? 2013. Okay, so just last mm -hmm. year. You're already ready for your second one. Yes. <laughs> this one, well, this no doubt is powerful. The next one will cause your friends, mm -hmm. your clients mm -hmm. to dig even deeper. Yeah. And it's called Transformations. Yes. Tell yeah. us about transformation. That so that's um, that's just an idea. Sister Terry and I were talking. What's the next book going to be? What's the next mm -hmm. book going to be? And finally, we came up with this idea, and it was based on the fact that some of the women had sung in a choir at Scripps for this really big project called True Witness that had professional singers from different places in the world come, um, and Crossroads had a choir, and they talked about being transformed by the experience of being on stage and singing beautifully, um, singing a song about freedom, which was, uh, everybody was crying, right, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I thought, that's it, that's the, that's the title, that's the concept. And so I went in immediately. Um, actually, my first visit to back was Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, great, okay. And uh, they gave me a little bit of fudge uh, <laughs> that they had which made. Is wonderful. And um, we wrote about food. And you know, I did some warm-ups, and then we right. wrote about um, some experience that they felt had transformed them, and just got some for better, beautiful for worse. Both. It, it could be whatever they wanted. Um, I think most of them talked about a little worse and then better. Right. Was the way that they were. Anyone you at can it. reveal that touched you? Well, actually, um, one by Marlisa, uh -huh. um, where she talked about the experience of getting out of prison and her. Uh, Ne or, um, ne nieces and nephews and brother picking her up and the, her mother didn't know she was coming and oh sort of driving down you know highway five or whatever it was 101 yeah. and um, feeling like she was being transformed as she was talking to her niece and nephew about the right. stories and sort of telling them how it was how it had been and she said she felt like things were sort of falling off of her she was kind of oh coming my. out of a shell and then walking up to her front door and seeing her mother it through the open doorway like she had been waiting on me. That's mm. a quote. And we worked on that story, we workshopped it line by line, and at the end she just said, I'm so excited by this story, and I told her, this story is gonna make people cry. It's gonna be in a book, people are gonna read it, they're gonna know you, and- Where can we get these books? <laughs> <Where can we? laughs> that is on Lulu. Okay. Um, you can go on the internet and type in lulu.com, and then you type in Stinging for Our Suppers, and anyone can get this, it's $15. Thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Her I'm, name I'm is, happy to do it. Her name is Kimberly Drake, a professor at Scripps College. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition.